We have received multiple complaints from Seven Good at Britt McKinney accusing Nolly News of not featuring him enough in our intro shots. To correct this horrible wrong, today's intro is dedicated to our dear friend and honorable Nightly News correspondent Britt McKinney. Now, let's get on with our show. Good morning and happy Thursday. I'm Elijah Kennedy. It's April 13th and you're watching Nightly News. Thanks for tuning in for our 26th episode. Here, here with the story about MLCPA's Teacher of the Year is Nightly News correspondent Isaiah Rocha. Thanks, Ricky. Every year our faculty votes for one of the, their colleagues to be honored as Teacher of the Year. Because MLCPA is both a middle and high school, we actually get two of those Teachers of the Year. The votes are in. And for middle school, the teacher is Mr. Down. And for high school, Miss Walker. Congratulations, Mr. Dallas and Miss Walker. And thank you for being here with us today. Thanks so much. Mr. Dallas teaches seventh grade economics, journalism, and history. I know, because I'm in two of those classes. Miss Walker. What classes do you teach? I teach English 1, AP Lang, AP Lit, and Newspaper. A lot of APs there. Mm -hmm. We both must be very excited to get this award. Miss Walker, can you tell us what does it mean? It means a lot to me because I've been working really hard every day with my students to get them to the next level and I'm getting appreciation for all that hard work. Mr. Dallas, now that you and Miss Walker have won this award, what happened next? Well, we had to um, both write a bunch of essays. We had to put together a PowerPoint presentation. Because from here, uh, we both get to go on to the district level. Uh, and so out of the 200 plus uh, middle and high schools in HISD, we'll be up against all those teachers for HISD teachers. You have no problem. Well, <laughs> we wish the best of luck. You both deserve the win at the district level. And thanks again for being here today. Reporting for Nightly News, I am Isaiah Rocha. Thanks, Isaiah, and congratulations to Mr. Dawson and Ms. Walker. For our new announcements, we go to Nightly News reporters Miguel Guillen and Jacob Campos. Thanks, Elijah. He was coming up at MOCPA. Ms. Ryan recently hosted MOCPA's first annual Gifted and Talented Exposition, and the winners are in. For middle school, the winners are KV on Duncan Griggs, uh, Brendan Bunch, and Joseph Cadet. For high school, the winners are Brandon and Cameron Alonso, Lyle Davis, Rafael Quijano, Alonso Villegas, and Mario Garcia. They, were, they will represent us at the district exposition today. Good luck, guys! MOCPA will have a new start and end time near year. Starting at August, the new start time will be at 7.55 a.m., which means we'll get out earlier at 3.30 p.m. The new breakfast start time is at 7.25 a.m. MLCPA will be closed tomorrow, Friday 14th, for a spring holiday. Enjoy your day off. School will resume on, a, on Monday, April 17th. Ms. Walker is hosting a creative writing contest. The top six winners will receive prizes. You can submit essays, short stories, and novelas. There is an option from six props. Sport, spring, celestial, past events, birthday, or food. Submission should be emailed to Ms. Walker at nwalker3 at houstonisd.org before Tuesday, April 18th. If you have any questions, stop by and ask Ms. Walker or, short her, or shoot her an email. Next Friday will be the honorable and gold tie ceremony for the fifth six weeks. Nightly News will be on the scene to, to cover it. The senior prompt is next Saturday, April 22nd. That's all the news for this week. I'm Miguel Guillen. And I'm Jacob Campos. Back to you, Elijah and Ricky. Thanks, Miguel and Jacob. The mounting political and racial tensions in our country are having quite a few effects, including right here in Houston. Here with the story is Nightly News correspondent Thomas Fernandez. Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo released a new data last week that shows a sharp decline in crime reporting by Houston's Hispanic population. 
Chief Osovedo said new data from January through March shows that there had nearly been a 43% drop in sexual assault reports from the same period in 2016. He also shared that there was a 13% drop in reports of violent crimes. Chief Osovedo said he believes immigrants are afraid to report crimes due to the concerns over deportation. In a message directed towards Houston, towards Houston Hispanic community, the police chief said, we are not here to ICE agents. They need to be continued to be thoughtful. We, we have to be mindful that hearts and minds matter to people of Houston, especially victims of crimes. We are here for the victims and witnesses. We are not ICE agents. HPD is open and here for victims, regardless of their immigrant status. This story was first reported by Houston ABC 13, KTRK, reporting for Nightly News, I'm Thomas Fernandez. Thank you, Thomas. I hope the police chief's message breaks through. Now for a look at our school's finance mess in Texas. We go to Nightly News reporter Victor Ruiz. In Texas, wealthy school districts have to share money with poor ones in the so-called Robin Hood system. But earlier this year, the education commissioners changed how the state calculates that bill that helped wealthy school districts like Houston. But other school districts say it hurts them and violates state rules. The Mexican-American Legal Defense and Educational Fund has filed a lawsuit last week against the Texas Education Agency claiming that they didn't follow the process to change state rules. HISD is not a party in the lawsuit, but said in a statement that it believes the commissioner's decision was legal. HISD taxpayers will take another vote in May to decide how they want to pay the remaining balance with a check or by losing commercial property from its tax base. This story was first reported by Houston Public Media. Reporting for Nightly News, I'm Victor Ruiz. Thank you for that report, Victor. Now for some news even closer to home, we go to Nightly News correspondent Nathan Vidal's. With so much progress being made on MLCPA's new building, we wanted to bring you an update and exclusive interview with our principal, Dr. Crook. Thank you for being here with us, Dr. Crook. Thank you for having me. I drove by the new building the other day, and it looks like the outside is almost completely done. Is that true? And what part of the building face are they on? Yes, it is true. We're almost done. They're just improving the inside, doing the floors, painting, and other things to make the building aesthetically pleasing. And when do they plan to have it completed? Uh, very soon, uh, very soon, uh, in the next month or so. Uh, we're working on dates right now, but we're looking at late June, early July. And what's the current move-in date and plan? So when we get the date, the actual like number date, we'll tell you what that date is. But I can tell you we do have a big packing day here at the current Mickey Leland site on May 24th. That's right. We'll be packing up our boxes and getting ready. Uh, on May 24th to get ready to move. Dr. Crook, thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. I know I'm not alone in saying that I'm ready to move into the new building. Reporting for Nightly News, I'm Nathan Medoss. Thanks, Nathan. The new building is looking awesome. That's all for our show this week. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy your day off tomorrow. Have a great long weekend. The stars at night are big and bright Deep in the heart of Texas, the prairie sky is wide and high. Deep in the heart of Texas, the sage in bloom is like perfume. Deep in the heart of Texas, reminds me of the